With, with T-Rex. How many names does that game have? <laughs> All right, okay. many ladies and gentlemen, joining us live on the line from wherever it is that he lives, Mr. Bill Amond. Woo! 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 Welcome. Woo! I, I'm told he's here. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Blah, 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 blah. This is the technical difficulties dance. I was doing that earlier this morning. My version was a little different. It had more heel clicking. Click your heels together three times and say, I don't want technical difficulties anymore. I don't want technical difficulties There's no place like technical anymore. difficulties. There's no place like technical difficulties. <laughs> Ooh, dusk. Okay. We are Hello! Hey! Yay! Hey. Oh, sorry. We were just playing a game of Red Light, Green Light where we all had T-Rex arms and were dancing to the safety dance. So, I you know, a little out of breath. Is that, is that Chris Straub there? It is Chris yes, Straub. Yes, it is he. I, ref I refuse to... <laughs> <laughs> It's over. This interview is over. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us on the line at Desert Bus, Bill Amond, creator of Foxtrot. Yay! It's my cousin! And all around awesome guy. And, and all around awesome guy. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you very much for joining us. How's, how's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Good. Uh, Jerry, you want to call up the, uh, the blog post? Um, if anyone has any uh, questions for Bill, we'll be picking some from the uh, blog post on the Desert Bus blog, which I assume is there. Uh, just below the Confidence blog, I assume? A little further? Is there not one? <laughs> there is one. Keep going. It's further down? There it, there it is. is. Yay! All right. Oof! <sighs> uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, I was just... I was just looking at the the questions people have asked so far, and there's there's, uh, there's some there's some there's some heavy comic industry philosophical questions there. Let's <laughs> let's start in with this. What's the what's the best thing about having your comic so well recognized? Oh man, uh, it it's it's not what I imagined it would be like when I first started. I I, I uh, you know started out with this naive assumption that I. would you know, get great tables at restaurants and supermodels would be calling me up asking me to go to the Academy Awards with them. Um, and they're, and, but, uh, and they're it's, not? It's, it's not like that at all. Uh, the, the, the cool thing about um, having had a strip that's become successful is uh, my strip is famous, but I'm not personally, so I can go out, you know, in sweats and, and look really horrible and nobody knows who I am um, and nobody bugs me. And uh, and that's great, but at the same time, you know, because of my job, I've gotten to meet some really cool people in all kinds of different fields, and and uh, and that's that's been that's probably been the, the most fun, you know, having having friends now who you know work at Pixar or Disney or um, you know now I know Liz, and and I've gotten to know these Woodstock guys like Adam Savage and Will Wheaton, and and that's really cool. Um, that it's just sort of fun. Awesome. But, yeah. Oh. oh, that was back to us. Uh, someone in the chat, sorry, it's the, 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 uh, the chat room zips by very quickly. Someone said that you, you, uh, you look not dissimilar to Brian Cranston, which I believe is a compliment. <laughs> Somebody else told me that about two weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> I need to shave my head or something. <laughs> you could probably do a pretty good, yeah, you could probably do a pretty good Halloween costume. There may be money in that, you know, show up at parties and yeah. Hey, what's up? I'm Brian Cranston. How's it going? Because <laughs> um, I'm sure that's how he talks also. <laughs> I'm the Cranst. Uh, oh, this is, a, this is a cool question. Have you ever dealt with, uh, with editors or anything um, requesting uh, rewrites for references that maybe they considered were too, were too obscure or too nerdy? Or... No, the, the only time editors ever... Um come back to my syndicate and grumble is, is uh, usually over language issues. Um, you know, if you say something sucks um, or something blows, those are those are kind of red flag. Really? Oh. 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 Next to some papers. Um, but, no, I've, I've been pleasantly surprised with how much freedom I've had to push some of my geeky geeky tendencies um, onto, onto a mainstream audience. Um, you know, because I there there are a lot of jokes I've done that are you know physics related or pop culture related that that I know, you know maybe one or two percent of the readership is going to understand, and the other ninety eight are going to just be scratching their heads. Um, 
my hope my hope is I've done enough strips that most people enjoy that they'll give me a pass now and then. Well, it's the uh, it's the it's the conservation of humor where the the fewer people who find the joke funny, the the more those people will find it funny. I remember. Well, yeah, I mean, there's some truth to that. I mean, if you if you try and write a joke that that pleases everybody, you end up with something that's so generic and vanilla, plain vanilla, um, that it, that it may be mildly amusing, but it's it's not going to be particularly insightful or funny. Yeah, I remember uh, years ago reading as when I when I first realized how how deep Foxtrot was running in that was when you did the uh, the strip about all your bass. Yeah. No. That, that 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 blew my mind when I saw that in the in in my dad's morning newspaper. <laughs> yeah, I, I I guarantee you less than one percent of the readership <laughs> knew what that was talking about. Yeah. Um. Just trying to see here. Okay. Well, let's 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 go for this question. A lot of people agree that the newspaper industry is on the wane. Is in the question. But the newspaper comic is its own de uh, definitive style of comic. How do you think the move from analog to digital is affecting it, and will it affect newspaper style comics? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I I worry about the stuff I do, and 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 not so much the the business models of newspapers and and websites and things. Um, you know, my my hope and the assumption that I operate under is that if I do a strip that people think is funny, um, I'll have an audience and, you know, the challenge is just figuring out ways to get the strip to the audience and then make a living at it. Um, so far, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, the newspapers, while they're struggling, um, the comic section is, is, is still an important part of their offerings. And so I haven't, had too many cancellations over the last few years, um, but I'm definitely very much trying to, to keep my strip alive on the web um, because it, it's obvious that the future, not just for cartoons, but for but for you know all information is, is digital. Awesome. Oh, some good. Someone in the chat linked to the linked to the all your base strip. Excellent. Everyone in the chat to check that out. Uh, oh, Jamie, Richard. Uh, Jamie from from Child's Play wants to know if you're going to be at PAX East this year. She misses you. Oh, hi, Jamie. Um, I, I hope so. I need to, I need to double check the dates. Um, the challenge is I've got two teenagers, and so um, we often have spring break plans um, already sort of set in stone. And last year it was on Easter, I think, which made it tricky. But I love PAX and hope to come. Have you ever gotten any weird gifts from fans? See, if I say no now, all of a sudden I'll get a bunch of weird gifts. Oh, um, yeah, clever. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of anything from fans. Every now and then, and not, not recently, but years and years ago, I did, I did a uh, joke about Snapple, and all of a sudden my syndicate got 12 cases of Snapple, and then I did a joke about some some form of cookie and and you know the the sunshine bakery or whatever it was sent a zillion boxes of these cookies to my syndicate um and so the the joke i always made with my editor is i needed to start mentioning you know mercedes benz and rolex yeah. um <laughs> when they send them to the syndicate are are you in the same place as them do you actually get any of the snapple and cookies i well in the cases of stuff like that i just tell the syndicate to enjoy it on their own oh they don't, they don't need to ship it. But ship if somebody sent you a Mercedes, you'd want that, right? Yeah, that, that I'd claim. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, guys. You, you got Snapple and cookies for years. This one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a joke about a case of Mercedes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then everybody's yeah. happy. Just get a, a Costco flat pack of Mercedes <laughs> <laughs> shipped to the... Uh... Not for individual sale. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a... Uh... Is there any strip that you regret doing? Like a specific one of Foxtrot? Why? Um, well, when I put together my Best of Foxtrot two book set about three or four years ago, um, there were a lot of strips. You know, I, I had to read through all of my 20 plus years of, of material, and I would say about, about a quarter of my strips I regretted writing and drawing just because they didn't seem very good. Um, 
Now, every now and then, I may do a strip that, that has kind of a mean spirit to it, and I, and I always regret those after they run. Like, you know, um, that's sort of a cheap way to get a laugh. And, but All right. Nothing specific is jumping out. On the other end of that, is there, is, is there a, uh, and sort of following on from a previous question, this is, a, this, is, this is another question from the blog, is there a reference that you are especially proud of slipping into a strip that even if no one else got it, it just made you giggle like mad? Hmm. I'm not so sure about giggling. Um, I do on occasion stick in little little Easter eggy things, like there might be, um, like I like I did did one years ago where the um, boy Jason was at summer camp and it was a science camp and and um, there was some little note on the wall I think and it was in um, hexadecimal ASCII code and and so it just looked like little letters and numbers on the wall, um, but it spelled out a message like good job or something like that, which I thought was fine. Awesome. I did, I did, uh, try to think, I mean, th this wasn't that subtle. I did a World of Warcraft joke a few years ago and I had, um, Jason playing and, and he's just about to loot this epic item and all of a sudden the internet connection, the server goes down. Um, and then the last panel you see Blizzard headquarters and somebody's yelling, you know, Jenkins, did you trip on that cable again? <laughs> and that's a reference to Leroy Jenkins. Nice. Um, Excellent. That's a good one. That's a, that's a subtle reference. I like that. So there's a lot of people in the chat asking uh, if there's any web-based comics that you enjoy reading. Uh, <laughs> let's see, who could I mention and, and not a few people? There's that chainsaw suit guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> John Love Bison. his work. John by um, <laughs> I don't read a ton of comics anymore, and, and part of the problem is, is um, I'm always scared I'm going to steal somebody's joke by accident. Mm. Um, you can have uh, plausible I'm, deniability. Well, it, it's just I, I feel really, really bad when I do a joke that I think is original, and then I realize, you know, I read that in Calvin and Hobbes, or I read that in something else, and it just somehow worked its way through my brain, and... and tricked me into thinking it was my idea. Um, I mean, I, I read Penny Arcade, uh, I read uh, PVP, um, SKCD, um, Oatmeal now and then. Um, but he doesn't come out that often, so that's easier. Um, you know, a few. Fair enough. Which is probably more than I read newspaper comics at this point. <laughs> <laughs> We have a we we have we had an ongoing challenge this year that we've been uh, we've been given um, to collect secrets. Uh, this, there's a there's a viewer who will donate six dollars for every six dollar secret we uh, we we manage to to get. So we're asking each of our each of our guests for a secret. It doesn't have to be anything like dark or personal or whatever, but just something that you. Uh, Something that you think the majority of people wouldn't know. Secrets. Secret, secret, secret. Um, you should have warned me ahead of time. I could have thought of something funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, secret, 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 secret. Somebody play the Jeopardy music. All right. <laughs> No, Okay, let's not jeopardy. I'm going. not really <laughs> blame it. Uh, I am Brian, Brian Cranston. Cranston. Oh my god, it's Brian Cranston. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a secret that I've got. My life is an open book. Uh, it doesn't have to be his secret. Like, yeah. Him, right? yeah. Oh, <laughs> something about one of the characters in the comic, maybe? Is a suggestion from actually in the chat a suggestion from the person who is uh, giving us this challenge? Mm. Mm. Uh. Uh. All right, here's something. Well, it's all make believe, so it's not a real secret. Uh, That's fine. If I ever have the characters grow up in my strip. 
my plan is that Paige would end up being a doctor. So the girl who is sort of the science phobe in the strip actually has a brain hiding in there. Will blossom later in life. Nice. That's that's, that's really cool. I think that's great. But (laughs) knowing my work habits, that will never see the light of day. (laughs) Spoiler. Spoiler for something that's probably not going to ever happen. OMG spoilers. So I am to understand that we have we have an auction that you were involved in. Oh, do I have to witness this? It is right behind me here. That we will be uh, auctioning off with you on the line. This is, ladies and gentlemen, prepare prepare your wallets. Uh, I'm going to move up to the... Uh, those quarters ready. I'm going to move up to this camera here. This is a copy of Foxtrot book, Jason Tron 2012. Uh, which is, sorry, signed by Bill Amos. And... But wait, there's more. Uh, for those of you who keep your eye on the Desert Bus Twitter account, you will notice, or you will have seen before we uh, before we started the the run. Um, oh, I'll come down here. Before we started the run, we tweeted a uh, Desert Bus specific um, Foxtrot one panel that Bill did for us, uh, and we are auctioning off the original. So, signed Foxtrot book and a piece of original, not not merely Foxtrot, but Foxtrot and Desert Bus Ania, oh which God, apparently oh is God. a... <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. The ghost of Brian Cranston. Watching us. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, if you are unfamiliar with the bidding process, go to howtobid.desertbus.org, but I recommend you do that quickly. Um, do we have the auction ID for you guys? Yes, we're good. What? Oh, right, of course. It's the li- it's, I forgot the live auction light. Woo. Live auction time! <laughs> All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for this Foxtrot lot, signed copy of uh, Jason Tron 2012, si- uh, signed by Bill Amend, obviously, and a piece of original Foxtrot artwork, Featuring a desert bus joke. The bidding is open. Da 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 da. We have auction sign, indeed. I'm waiting for the bid. There it is. The bidding is open. Two hundred dollars from Lindums. Whoa! Immediately. One thousand two hundred and thirty-four dollars and fifty-six cents. Wow! That's amazing. From Lord Hosk. Whoa. Lord Hosk has been really <laughs> wanting to win an auction. Has he won one yet? Not yet. Not yet. But he, he, he may have made a statement today. <laughs> Let's find out if anyone was willing to step to Lord Hosk and his fantastic bid of one, two, three, four, five, six. One of a kind. One of a kind indeed. An original piece. Oh, oh Snowfire! Oh, Snowfire! Twelve fifty. One thousand two hundred fifty is the current high bid. Snowfire lives in Scotland, if I recall, and is and is not actually familiar with Foxtrot because it wouldn't be in their papers, but just thinks it's neat. Sure. If I remember correctly, too, Bill, you there aren't a lot of original Foxtrot drawings. Uh, like circulating around, you tend to keep most of right. your stuff, don't you? Correct. Yeah, yeah, you're. Wow. Kind of, I, I, so that is quite a rare thing so to have. So that this is that this is any Foxtrot original yeah. art is special, but that it is Desert Bus specifically, that just that makes it extra special for me. It's a very sweet thing. All right. Yeah. So, Snowfire, the current leading bid at twelve fifty. I think we will have to uh, force people to step up to that Absolutely. by calling going once to Snowfire. Th- I like oh. the- Oh! oh. Dicks! Dicks! Dicks, our own chat mod. Oh, wow. 
Lord Hosk, 1,331 cents. I don't like that, he says. 1,300... Oh, the man says, OMG! <laughs> Bill, while we're waiting for it to come through here... Yeah. Am I, this, am I to believe that you are wearing an Aperture Science hoodie? I am. Oh, oh Tasty Laksa. At thirteen thirty-seven, and they say Bill Amund is my crush, according to the high bidder. Trying some flattery. Yeah. <laughs> Tasty laksa with the current high bid. More bidders coming out of the woodwork works too. I know we've had four. We've had four pretty high bidders on this. Tasty laksa, Dix, Lord Hosk, and Snowfire. Whoa! Snowfire, Whoa! and immediately Lord Hosk. Okay. Oh. Oh, with a palindrome bid of one four zero zero four one, one thousand four hundred dollars and forty one cents. Lord Hosk currently leading with a palindrome. I know. I know. Oh, live auctions, man. Silence. Do I have to turn up spots drum? Is that what we're listening to? Genesis. <laughs> Very nice, Ian. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> let's let's call it going once. Waiting for the thing to catch up. Going once to Lord Hosk for a palindrome. No, Dix is still in this. He wants this. Fourteen hundred and six. Broke the drone. Wow. He broke the drone. The drone breaker. Snowfire's back. Half hour auction away. No snowfire, <laughs> bad snowfire. Fourteen fifty. I hear they had a half hour auction war earlier with snowfire and lazy lantern. Yeah. All right, fourteen fifty. The current high bid from snowfire. Whoa. Tasty laksa. Please stop sending private messages saying you want to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> but it says you're tasty. The point is, current leading bid at $1,488.88. I love the weird auction the amounts weird we get. It's not like prices right where that's a... Where that's a relevant <laughs> strategy, yeah. no. Oh, $1,495. No, it just makes it more difficult for me to say out loud. Yeah. <laughs> it's a poker strategy, too. Really? Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> bidding weird numbers rather than raising to 800, like 801. Tilt your opponent out? Yeah. Yes. All right. Nope, Whoa, Snowfire's no back fire. in it, but why? I like auctions. They make your hearts fail. <laughs> $1,500, $1,500, the current leading bid from Snowfire, who... <laughs> Who doesn't read Foxtrot, but is just a fan of a fan of what's going on and, and likes likes supporting child's play. Oh, oh my goodness me. Right Lord Hosk. <laughs> Oops, I did it again. One five 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 point five one. Another palindrome. One thousand five hundred and fifty-five and fifty-one cents. Lord Hosk still in this. Lord Hosk is in this. I, but I am I am willing to bet Snowfire is still in this, and I'm willing to bet Dix, Dix is probably still in this. He oh, is! Dix. 1570? Dix is still in this. Tasty might still be in it. Yeah, Tasty Luxa hasn't said anything in a while. Might still be in it. I get the impression Dix is trying to attrition his opponent, though. Just, you know, steadily raising by about 5 bucks. Yeah. All right, I haven't seen any action there. We're gonna call going once. No, oh, we're not. Snowfire. Ah, Snowfire has a high bid of 1594. Ah, oh, they do that to you actually. Every time. <laughs> you guys. Actually, you a little slow on the draw right now? Too much driving? Too much driving, Dick says, I need not your puny smack talk. <laughs> well then, someone's got a bid higher than 1,594. All right, I guess we will we will maintain that accidental going once then and verbally call it a game. So we have gone once to Snowfire. 
We will call twice on Snowfire, who is now taunting his opponents by saying, Come on, surely you can do better. Oh, 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 a new oh, bid! Out of nowhere! My I'm like bid. so barely okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> a new bidder, QMI6. Oh, I see. QMI6. With $1,600 and the, and, the, and the note, my wife is so barely okay with this. <laughs> it's for charity. I think. It's for charity. Oh, <laughs> six, six, six. Almost made Bill do a spit take there. Are you alright, Bill? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Dix at 1605. This is simultaneously <laughs> terrifying and brilliant having the caller back at the back on the yeah. green screen. Awesome. He's watching too. Makes me think of Zardog. Oh, Tasty Locks is still in Woo! it. Just tell her you won this in a giveaway. <laughs> $1,610 and one penny. I'm just gonna say 1610. That's not accurate though. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. Here, it just, uh, the bidding is intense. The amount of comments about Dix's username. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna have to start calling going once immediately after bids come in, just to just to force people to sack up and put their money out there. So we're gonna call going. No, oh, they're, they're, they're perfect. Oh. Perfect. Snowfire bids going once to Snowfire for one thousand six hundred. <laughs> And fifteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. That going once sticks. We have already gone once. Take your shot now. <laughs> That's just looking extremely disappointing. <laughs> we are waiting for the lag of the feet to catch up. And then we are going to say going twice. There you go. Oh! 1625 from Dix. Dot, 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 he says. All right, going once to Dix. Boom, boom. Uh, our chat's... Oh, wait. It's lagging. It's really choking. Yep. Oh, QMI6. Oh, no! Perfect. Changes going once to QMI6. <laughs> 1,630. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> freaking out. People keep bidding just just before he says going once. That's okay. We're just we're just we're just owning it now. <laughs> it's fine. It's part of it now. <laughs> Dick Dix is still in this. One thousand six hundred and thirty-five. Going once to Dix. There we go. His name is Dixon, that's why the name. QMI6, 1,650. Now his wife wants it. <laughs> oh! She's gotten invested. Get her on side. Good. Good. Whoa! Oh. 2,000! At the rate this is going, I'll need to sell another cello. <laughs> Keyword is another cello. <laughs> Alright. That is quite the step up. I feel like that's a mob. 2000. Yeah. Well, they, they, were talking in, they were talking earlier about how, how interesting it sounds for Bill to be saying, my syndicate. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of comics, it's always crime. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, 2012. Oh, fire! 2012. Alright, going once, it's so far. Going once. Going once. Alright, Snowfire with. Bidding of this year, 2012. And when it has gone, we have called going once to Snowfire. If Dix or QMI6 or Tasty Laksa are still in this, now is the time to go. We are gonna call going twice. Ooh, 2012. Uh, Dix is too rich for his blood. Uh, Dix is out. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, Dix. Still one more. Woo. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Take the shot, guys. What about the others? Now is the time to get in there. We've given you plenty of time. Oh. We've called going once. Oh, QMI6 says I'm out, so is my wife. Oh, right. sorry, oh. QMI6. So going once, going twice, sold yeah. $2,012. Yeah. 
picture. Oh, he drew a picture. <laughs> it sold for 22. Oh, yeah. 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 Skype back up on the main screen. <laughs> that was cute. One second, Bill. Let's let's see oh, that. Okay. Let's see that again once we bring you back up on the main. On the. Let's try. One second. There we there go. We go. Can we see that again? Yeah. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> Bill, thank you so, so much for that. Well, <laughs> thank you for uh, making me feel pretty valuable here. <laughs> well, we really, really appreciate it. That was, uh, that was wonderful. And uh, thank you so much for calling in and uh, talking to us. Um, hopefully we can have you back next year. That would be awesome. I am happy to, to help in, in whatever way I can. And, and Child's Play is an awesome, awesome thing. So uh, good luck. Uh, with the rest of your marathon. <laughs> Great, thank you. All right, All right. Yeah. have a good rest of your day, Bill. I think Goodbye. you're really cool. <laughs> that was wow. amazing. That was amazing. He's so great. I kept that under control. Yeah, like a little note, like, I hope it sells.